I was thinking about put it, uh, like trying to make socks for my sock puppet. I thought that would be kind of oh, meta. Oh. meta. Ah. <laughs> Welcome to Crafts with Dean Tepper. I am Dean Tepper and we are here today with Dante McGilvery. McGilvery, yes. I get that right? Yes, All right. yes. Um, and uh, we're here to make sock puppets. Um, and we're going to talk uh, about hopefully more than sock puppets. That <laughs> is a really limited conversation landscape. Do these um, have any meaning for you? Uh, yes, it does. I have questions already. So, <laughs> the sock puppets, is, are they representative of minorities? <laughs> black and brown, you know, I just, that, I'm just asking. So, I, I, I used the black one today. Okay. Since uh, I can relate, you know. So, uh, <laughs> so I, which one will you use? I should just stick with the glue. <laughs> um, so, we are, and we're jumping right into um, sensitive issues. So, let me, so, Dante is yes. a... Um, a PhD student in the Theater for Youth program here yes. at the Herbert Institute. Absolutely. I wonder, as you think about theater and storytelling and the telling of difficult stories, do you see humor as part of that? Absolutely, absolutely. Whether it's in stage plays or if it's in uh, casual conversations, it's a method in which we can, we are able to have these difficult discussions and understand that they don't have to weigh us down and make us feel depressed. I'm just a person who always use humor. Okay, so okay, we're gonna we're gonna now wind back. Okay. And talk a little bit about how theater entered your life. Uh, I wanted to be a rapper growing up. I actually was was pretty good at it. I'm, I and mean, I'm talking about when I was, you know, eight, nine, ten years old, <laughs> uh, growing up in inner city Dallas. But by the time I got to middle school. Um, I had a, I took a theater class, uh, a teacher named Miss Gamble. She was our theater Ms. teacher. Miss Gamble, shout out to Miss Gamble. Yeah, shout out to Miss Gamble's. Uh, and and uh, I fell in love with it because that was the first time she asked us to come down, volunteer to come down to the stage and uh, center floor and uh, improvise. Mm. And I and I did a uh, scene from uh, Friday because that was my favorite movie at the time. <laughs> Don't so have you ever so, seen Friday? Uh, is it the Detective Friday? Okay, no. yeah, no. no. This, oh, I'm so, way off. Yeah, way. Off. All right. But but don't worry about it. I want to just I, Google it later. Okay. <laughs> it's I, Ice Cube has a, a role in that. So I cannot believe I just said <laughs> like that is like old whiteness. No, but <laughs> how do you ethically tell someone else's story? Because it's a big deal, if you, it is. right? If your story has not been projected, has not been part of the central narrative, and all of a sudden someone is saying, "I'm going to take it," how do you think about that? From uh, what your responsibility is? Yes, uh, that's very good. That's a very good question. What I do is, after I hear the story, I'm including those people in the process. When it comes to dealing with communities of color and 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 communities in which people are often overlooked, my aim personally is to change the way their stories are represented because oftentimes they're, they have been misrepresented. And the only way to do that is to listen and constantly be involved with the people who's, who we are creating art with. Uh, you kind of become a minor celebrity. Yeah, uh, yeah. You won MLK Award uh, most recently. Mm -hmm. and a lot of news stories about, about that. Um, you started uh, you know, in part with some support from a, a grant from the Herbert Institute, um, yes. a, uh, a, 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 a company called Sleeveless Sleeveless Axe. Yes, Tell us about Sleeveless drama. Axe. Yeah, Sleeveless Axe is a drama company that Claire Redfield and I, uh, Claire is a MFA in the Theater for Youth program, yep. and she and I started this company called Sleeveless Axe, and that name is it says that we don't have to roll up our sleeves to get to work. We don't even have sleeves because we're always involved in the community that we are working in. So why should we roll up our sleeves if we're always involved? Where do you find the participants? We're, we're working with the community of East Lake Park. Okay. And what we want to do is just honor that history. Now isn't that, that's a, that's a, that is a history most people in Phoenix don't know about. Yes, yes. So one yes. of the first African-American communities? Absolutely. 
Still very vital. Still very great vital. Great park there. Yes. Great, great community yes. center. So we get all of these stories from important people or people who have been impacted by um, uh, or has a story that's connected to East Lake Park. And we want to uh, have a site specific event where we're honoring the history and heritage of this place. And the people who will participate in it are people who um, from the community of East Lake. So in the in some of the stories that, that were written about your work, yes. um, there's an extraordinary uh, sleeveless act mm -hmm. uh, of, that, that um, you decided to, to undertake in Dallas. Yeah, yes. Where you <laughs> said, I'm going to give up everything I own and I'm going to spend a year homeless. I mean, how, how did you come to that decision? I wanted to know, how does homelessness change a person's perspective? Seeing life from the bottom up, you know? I really honed in on the, on the myths, the lies, or the narratives um, that are associated with homelessness. So I did it for one year. I gave up. I, had, I was renting a house at that time. I gave everything away. And, uh, and I just went downtown to the streets. The first day, I didn't know how to get started. So I just laid on the sidewalk downtown. And one guy named Robert came up. He was another homeless guy. Hey, you don't have to sleep here. Let me show you where the shelter is. He taught me the ropes of uh, maneuvering through the city. When I went to the shelter and I woke up, I had to see a case manager. And I'll never forget when it was one-on-one -on -one and the lady was at a computer typing away. What's your name? Dante? Okay, uh, wh why are you homeless? Do you have a drug problem? No. Alcohol problem? No. Medical issue? No. You don't have any of those? No. And she turned and looked at me. Then what's wrong with you? And I said, I really just want to um, experience homelessness for a year. And it was important for a year to be considered chronically homeless. I said, I wanted to do this for a year so I can do research and kind of understand how the life of, the life of homelessness. And she looked and she said, you sure you're not on drugs? So, uh, okay, I think it's time for us to at least share mm -hmm. what we've been doing here. Okay. Um, and, uh, and so, do you want to present your puppet? Sure. And this is DTZ. <laughs> Fo sheezy. My kneesy. And he, he has the, uh, the locks going in. Yeah. His hair, he has the locks. He has, uh, he has the grill, you know, I'm from the South and uh, from Dallas, but in Dallas and Houston, gr grills are everything. And what, yeah. like, just, yeah, I just, cause, yeah. um, this is just part of <laughs> you, you, education you, of the dean. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what does, like, a good grill cost? A good, oh, cost? No, oh my gosh, now, you gotta have hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes wow. to get all of the, you know, you gotta look up Paul Wall. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Paul Wall is in the in Houston, and he's customizing grills. So you you probably make good money, Dean. You can go down, <laughs> save <laughs> save a couple of years of your uh, your salary. You go <laughs> go meet up with <laughs> go meet up with Paul Wall and come back. That just seems implausible. That's dude. innovative. <laughs> that, that is innovative. That, yeah. would not, that would definitely not happen at my oh. But here's his grill. At, See, that's probably one I can afford. Right yeah. uh, I might take that off that puppet and yeah. put it right in my mouth. Yeah. Um, okay, let me introduce my puppets. Okay. Um, oh, you made two of them. I made two puppets. So we've got this puppet, which uh, has kind of a, uh, a cool uh, feather hat happening, uh, a heart to symbolize um, that it, uh, it is an empathic puppet, and uh, then a bow tie. Nice. Which, um, <laughs> You know, is themed, uh, <laughs> themed, and deemed. Now this one has a very interesting set of uh, um, uh, sort of a, a hat slash horn, um, also a heart, uh, and then a boa at the bottom. Whoa! These guys sleep in the same bed, but they haven't really had a meaningful conversation in about three years. <laughs> So they need to go to some couples therapy and work through why they're not communicating well. And by the way, the heart just fell off. So what does that mean? Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for for making puppets. Crafting with the Dean. Crafting with the Dean. Right here. All right.